I believe there's never been a more important time in the history of our planet for the role of a modern accredited zoo. Of course, I'm a little bit biased, so I'd like to share with you a few stories to help you understand why that is my belief. Imagine that you're a four-month-old polar bear cub living on Alaska's North Slope in an incredibly harsh environment. You're separated from your mother. You haven't been taught to hunt or to fish. And making matters worse, you haven't been eating, so you're half the body weight that you should be. Fog's rolling in, and there's an adult male polar bear in your vicinity, and they do cannibalize. Luckily for this little bear, there were some research biologists watching her for the last 24 hours, and they rushed in to rescue her. U.S. Fish and Wildlife and polar bear experts now had the chore of trying to find the very best home for Koenig's future. They chose the Louisville Zoo. We had just completed a state-of-the-art exhibit with wonderful support facilities. We had a staff that had decades of polar bear experience. And one critical factor is that we were accredited by the Association of Zoos and Aquariums. This is the gold standard, which looks at our animal welfare, our conservation efforts, our, our education efforts, and, and everything that we do. This is Connick's story in her arrival to Louisville. Connick was discovered on the day that we opened Glacier Run. She was on the North Slope on the Connick oil field, and she was an orphan cub. She comes from a place that is very desolate. It's one of the hardest environments in the world to survive in. And she was tough enough to make it long enough to get here so she could share her story. This is Cunnick's home. The exhibits that we design are critical to the animal welfare. And Glacier Run provides great resources both on exhibit and off. And we create storylines with every exhibit in modern zoos to make sure that we could connect people to what's happening with polar bears. Zoo exhibits historically were one exhibit in a few bedrooms. The animals went off and on to that same exhibit. The Louisville Zoo 20 years ago revolutionized the profession with an exhibit called Islands that created multiple exhibits in multiple spaces for multiple species. We enriched their environment. We gave them choices. And to make this all happen, we had to build relationships with the zookeeper and the animal through operant conditioning to move them through these spaces, which improved those relationships and improved the care for all of these animals. Importantly, Cunnick, she was born at a tough time for polar bears, threatened species. But she was fortunate that zoos had evolved to the point where they could do excellent work in caring for them. Now she's a wonderful ambassador where people could come and learn about her story at a town that replicates a, a village on the edge of the Arctic Circle, where people have learned to live in balance with the top of a food chain predator, the polar bear, and also be watchful of the environment around them. A little more diminutive animal that almost didn't have this opportunity is a black-footed ferret. This species was twice thought to be extinct until in 1980, a border collie named Shep brought a carcass back to his ranch owner in Matitsi, Wyoming. Shep led us to a population of 18 black-footed ferrets. Out of those 18, only 11 were founder stock. The federal fish and wildlife officials State officials and zoos got together a handful of folks to work out their husbandry, to reproduce them, and reintroduce them, creating a, a sustainable plan to get these ferrets to exist in the remnant wild. The Louisville Zoo, coming from 11 animals, has reproduced over 1,100 black-footed ferrets. More than half of those have been reintroduced into the remnant wild. And the real success is we now have over 300 black-footed ferrets existing in the North American prairie and thriving. But this begs the question, what about all the other species? What about all the other habitats? These are stories that move us, that inspire us to try and do more, to try and tell these stories, to try and save more species. But we have challenges. The world population is increasing. There are more needs for energy and natural resources. More people are moving to urban centers than ever before in the history of the planet. And along with that comes a lot of complex situations and, and commensurate stress. We're also becoming more and more connectedly disconnected. People communicate to each other indirectly through devices, and they certainly are connecting less and less with nature. The Earth's population is now 7.5 billion. It has increased threefold in the last three generations. Experts predict that by the year 2050, the population will be 10 billion. 
from the 7.5 billion on Earth today. Biodiversity has decreased by half in the last 40 years. We're losing our wildlife, and animals that are thriving are those that could coexist within human systems, finding the opportunity for food and shelter with the development that we create. And this could very well be our wildlife of our future. So who is stepping up? Who is taking on this challenge to let us know this story, to help save endangered species, to help educate all so we could start considering what is our planetary role? How are we going to be part of this balance? The Association of Zoos and Aquariums is a big part of that answer. We are advocates and defenders. We are champions and friends. We are deep sea divers and river riders. We are scientists and researchers and so much more. We are the Association of Zoos and Aquariums, 230 strong accredited members who go to work to ensure the conservation of our precious wildlife in their home and in our care. Visit aza.org slash join us to find your local accredited aquarium or zoo. The Louisville Zoo is just one of that 230. Imagine the power that they could create in getting people to reconnect with each other, to get unplugged and spend quality time together, and then recreate, reconnect with nature with great animal ambassadors like Connick. Zoos, accredited zoos, are a place where we can motivate advocates out of the 190 million guests that attend U.S. zoos and aquariums every year. This can be the scene of our future leaders helping bring this message forward. Most people don't realize this, but zoos on an annual basis and aquariums attract more guests than all major U.S. sporting events combined. So what can we do? How can we be part of this? How can we participate? And how can accredited zoos and aquariums make a difference to help us make sure that these precious species are here for generations to come? Back at the beginning of the environmental movement in the late 1960s, I think it was best summarized by a Senegalese conservationist named Baba Diom. And what he said is, in the end, we will conserve only what we love, only, we will love only what we understand, and we'll understand only what we are taught. And that's what accredited zoos and aquariums do. I leave you with a thought, what will be your planetary legacy? Thank you.